I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, uh, take it away, Doctor. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is brought to you by Go to Meeting with HD Faces. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're having a good time. I tell you what, I am. The technology this week has just been wild and woolly. Yes, wild and woolly. Anyway, I've been in class all during the past week on Improvata. Been studying to become an Improvata certified engineer, which is ICE, I-C-E, ICE. So I'll get to add those initials after my name. As somebody in class said, now if there was just one that was, you know, like ACE, you know, because there is a Cisco ACE system, so you could have ICE, ACE, baby. Yes. Well, I thought it was weird too. But anyway, so being an ICE, that's cool <laughs> yeah okay Fred I know but what are you gonna do anyway this is <laughs> Dr. Bill the computer curmudgeon the netcast and we are proud members of the tech podcast network techpodcast.com if it's tech it's right here on Dr. Bill the computer curmudgeon <laughs> okay all right, let's go into the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, is drbill.tv, dot TV, as it says right there on the screen. And uh, drbill.tv, of course, because this is a video netcast. And I'm encouraging you to participate by watching the video. And, uh, you know, tell your friends. Couldn't hoit, right? All right, next item, first item. Amazon Music Cloud licensed by all music labels. Now, this is pretty cool. That means that the Amazon Music Cloud service is now fully licensed by all four of the top record labels. Now, uh, that would be Universal Music Group, Sony Music Entertainment, EMI, and Warner Music Group. Dude. Now, that will mean that this uh, service is going to get really a lot more content and it's going to be uh, because it's licensed they're going to be able to do something that's really cool which is if you upload let's say a cd to your cloud area in amazon they can save space by basically making sure that there's only one copy of that file binary version copy of that file out there so it saves them space and that was part of what they were negotiating to get to do. So that's kind of cool that they were able to negotiate that. Pretty neat. All right, ebook sales past physical books. This is the next item. Ebook sales. Now, this is the very first time that electronic books, ebooks, have passed physical paper books. Just plain old paper. Where is a plain old paper book? Around here somewhere. But anyway, oh, here it is. It was under things, and they all fell and made noise. <laughs> this, as you know, is geek wisdom. The sacred teachings of nerd culture. It's a paper book. But you can now get books electronically. Yes. And for the first time, e-books have passed physical books in terms of sales. That is awesome. That's as of the first quarter of 2012. And I'm a big e-book dude. I do a lot of e-bookery. <laughs> yeah, I know, Fred, that's not a word. Summer's coming, and we're planning a lot of time away from work, whether it's vacation or traveling, whatever. You can stay in touch with Go to Meeting with HD Faces. You can have meetings with people at work, even if you're on vacation. Now, maybe you, you wouldn't want to do that all the time, but if you had to, it's better to be able to get away on vacation than not take vacation at all. So, go to meeting with HD Faces is your solution. And right now, there's a special promotion through our connection with Citrix Systems. If you want to get a 30-day free trial 
of GoToMeeting with HD Faces, you can do that through our special code word podcast. And there's another very special offer that Citrix is doing right now for a very limited time. If you go to Facebook and like Citrix Systems Go to Meeting, then you have an opportunity. You'll be entered into a contest to win one of eight, get that eight iPads that are available. So do it now. Go to Facebook, like Go to Meeting and you will be entered into the contest for one of those eight iPads. And take advantage of that special offer uh, for 30 days free. Think about that, 30 days free. Perfect time right now as you're planning on going on vacation to do go to meeting and be able to stay in touch at work. Next item. You remember last time I talked about that Microsoft might have an iPad competitor, have a basically a tablet. Well, they did announce it and they call it Microsoft Surface. Now this harkens back to the old Surface technology that Bill Gates announced many, many years ago. And I actually kind of had a spot on one of my netcasts kind of making fun of Surface. So if you want to uh, look on the blog, drbill.tv, and go to the uh, video netcast area and do a search for Microsoft Surface. You can actually see the video that I'm talking about where it made fun of Microsoft Surface. <laughs> yes. Anyway, they have chosen to use that particular name, Surface, as the name for their new tablet. Now, actually, this has kind of taken the computer world a bit by storm. People are really liking this, what they see of it. You have a, a full-blown tablet, but then it also has a cover that clicks into place, kind of like the iPad, the new iPad cover. And when it does, it becomes both a trackpad and a keyboard uh, for use with the tablet. Also, the back of the tablet folds out to make a little stand, so you can actually stand it up and use the cover uh, with the keyboard and the trackpad, and it's almost like a laptop. It will run the full version of Windows 8. And that's what's pretty amazing. This is not a, a you know, chopped down version. This is a full blown version of, of Windows 8. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. It also, one of the things that I do like about it, this is highly unusual for Microsoft, is they are opening it up for people to develop for the platform. All the ports are non proprietary. And uh, that's, that's kind of non Microsoft y, you know what I mean? Next item here is what is the Microsoft Service Tablet Surface Tablet like? Hard to say, but uh, it is a video. So I encourage you to go to the blog and click on the video, and you will see that uh, John from Techno Buffalo, which is a uh, podcast from Revision Three, um, they he talks about the Microsoft Surface Tablet, what it's like, how it works, what it feels like, that kind of thing. He got to actually put his hands on it and uh, sounds kind of neat. So, you know, I'd like to see one, but it is going to be fairly expensive. So, you know, of course, so's the iPad, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I I'd love to get my hands on it and play with it for sure. Uh, next item. Will the error code 451 be used for the censorship code on the internet. Now you know that if you encounter a 404 page, that means that what you were looking for on the internet was not found. That's the universal code of, I don't know where it is. Well, think of the 451 code as censorship. This is what's been proposed to honor Ray Bradbury that I mentioned a, a, week, a week, what is it, a week ago or a couple weeks ago that he passed away. And uh, they're thinking about honoring him uh, because of his book Fahrenheit 451, which had to do with censorship, among other uh, issues that he was writing about. But uh, at any rate, uh, there are a lot of countries and states and so forth around the world that are trying to censor the internet and so if you try to go to a page that they have censored the idea is to put up this page with a 451 code that basically says shame 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 you're censoring the internet yes I like that idea I think that's a great idea <laughs> evil states trying to do this 
they will be thwarted, at least in the minds of those of us who are geeks. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> that, of course, is the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is very unusual and really cool. And that is Blue Griffin. Yes, that's the name of it. Blue Griffin. Now, there's a history behind this. Used to, you had to look really hard to try to find a WYSIWYG web development editor. It's hard to say, so I said it slowly. At any rate, and way back years ago, uh, some open source developers came out with one called NVU. NVU is the way it's spelled. And I made that a Geek Software of the Week back then. Well, the development of NVU fell off and it wasn't being developed anymore. Now the cool thing about NVU was it was Linux, Windows, and Mac based. Well, the same group of developers have kind of not exactly revived the project, but created a new project at bluegriffin.org, which I'll put up right here on the screen. And uh, it is a new WYSIWYG web editor and I'm telling you, it looks really nice. I downloaded it on my Ubuntu laptop, which, by the way, my Ubuntu back laptop right here is back to being Ubuntu. <laughs> Remember last week I said I had to turn it into a Windows box again to do the Improvata class. Well, I'm done with the class, and so I put it back. You say, how'd you do that, Dr. Bill? Well, here's how. I used this CD right here. See if I can do this without dropping more stuff on the floor, apparently not. This CD contains the open source product G4L, which is short for Ghost for Linux, which allowed me to, prior to doing the Windows Restore of using a Cronus of my Windows 7 based laptop, I did a backup to the network of my Linux build of my laptop. So now that I'm done, I backed up once again using a Cronus, my Windows PC, because I had all the patches. Remember I said all those patches I had to update and everything? Well, I did that and I restored the image from the Ubuntu image that I made and now I'm back on Linux. But all that's a digression. <laughs> I was talking about Blue Griffin. <laughs> yes. The point is I installed it on my Linux box and it works great. It's WYSIWYG. It does nice what's called pretty primming in HTML where it, you know, it, it uh, tabs it all in and straightens it all out and makes it look really cool. So it's, it's awesome. And uh, it is based on the Gecko engine that was developed for Firefox. And it is available for download for both, again, Windows, Linux, and the Mac several versions of Linux, and I'm telling you, it is really slick. So it is tri-licensed, that's tri is in three, licensed under the Mozilla Public License 1.1, the GNU General Public License version 2, and the GNU Lesser General Public License version 2.1, which I find interesting, but odd <laughs> that they're using three different licenses. But anyway, maybe it's because there's components like Gecko in there and they're having to kind of license it amongst all of those things uh, or something. Yes. Well, anyway, malware. We hate malware. Yes, we do. And there's a strange new form of malware that it now attacks network printers. What? So at work, if your network printer suddenly starts printing gibberish, tons and tons, reams and reams of paper coming out of your printer with junk on it, you'll know that you've been hit by the Trojan dot Millicenso. I'll put that up here on the screen. Yes, the worst hit appears to be in large companies in the US, India, and Northern Europe, including the UK and South America. Huh. Anyway, once the malware is open, it redirects the user to pages to serve up adverts, a common way for malware writers to generate quick revenue. This one appears to have the side effect of affecting the printers. <laughs> the malware unpacks a file in the PC's printer queue, which Windows then turns into a print job. Because these files aren't readable to ordinary folk without special tools, it turns out incomprehensible gobbledygook 
and doesn't stop until the printer runs out of paper, is disconnected from the power supply, or attacked by a peeved system administrator with an axe. I like this guy who wrote this article. Yes! <laughs> Wouldn't you like to attack a printer with an axe? <laughs> I, can't, I can't get behind that. All right, anyway. Malware that attacks printers. I'm telling you, the world is getting wonky. So, on that note, we'll ease on out of here. But remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.